welcome to this uh, Wednesday that we are now remembering St. Martin of Tours, Bishop. He was, uh, he lived from 316 to 397. And St. Martin of Tours, if I, we were in church and I were to ask, you probably all know his story. And the, the wonderful uh, portrait of Martin of Tours is that he's this military guy in his horse and riding, and then he sees a poor person, and then he get his clock and, and cut it in half and give it to the naked person. And that, that's, that's a depiction and, and, a, and, a, and a picture of, of, uh, of him. So if I were Father Ron, I would have right here a nice painting of St. Martin of Tours, and I will talk about him, but you got me instead of Father Ron, so uh, just picture that. But one of the things that is interesting about St. Martin of Tours is that he was from a Roman family, a military family, and he was called to serve in the military. And he had really, really like what would be a magnificent career in the military in the Roman Empire. And remember, what made the Roman Empire great was their military. So he was on a good track to be a, a, a wealthy man, a very important man, and have some a few titles. But he came to believe in Jesus. He came to encounter with the faith. And, and, and in his faith, in his reflection, in his spirituality, he came to the conclusion that in good conscience, he cannot be a military person. In good conscience, he could not take arms against other people. And then he appealed to his conscience to not continue his military career. Of course, this is back in the 300s. So uh, he was uh, put into jail. He was put in prison for that. Because how can you deny your military career, being, being a Roman citizen and being somebody important? But then later on, he was left go free. And as I mentioned to the, at the beginning, his, the, the big uh, depiction of him is he given half of his clock to a beggar. But actually, in the, a dream that he had, he saw later on that that beggar that he has given his half of the clog was Jesus, who was wearing his, um, his clog. So he decided that his life after, after jail, he was, a, he was gonna have a life of a hermit, a, a secluded life, apart from the world, leaving everything behind, and then come to pray, dedicate his life to prayer and all that. Of course, he was a holy person. The people of Tours named him bishop, claimed him to be bishop, and he accepted only if they would allow him to have a small cell next to the cathedral and live there. He didn't want a palace. He didn't want anything big. He, most, he wanted to live his ascetic life, you know, a life of simplicity, a life of, of uh, having nothing, and, and just live with the small things. He didn't want anything extravagant for his life. So as I see Martin of Tours and other saints like St. Francis of Assisi, who live behind a comfortable life, a very comfortable and wealthy life and a successful life to follow Jesus. I'm always very touched and moved by these saints. And sometimes I look at myself and I think, I'm very selfish. These people left everything, what he considered, what they considered to be a successful life. They leave it, left it behind to follow Christ. How humbling that is. Once in my past life as a vocational promoter of the community of St. Paul, and I still look for vocations, but when I was in the Dominican Republic and I was doing a few trips to different places to promote vocations, um, I came into contact with a young and a wonderful guy who uh, was discerning 
the vocation to the priesthood. And he even decided to come and spend some time with us in the Dominican Republic. He was a very good guy, very good person, and like a solid person. But what I was shocked is that in a conversation later on, as he discerned his, 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 his vocation out, he said, look, I love your community life and your community lifestyle. I love what you guys do. And I really appreciate the work that you do for the poor, but I want to have a successful life. I want to have a successful life. And that kind of, at the time, I didn't know what to make out of it. You know, I really, I, I was like, okay, wait a minute. So should I take this as an insult? Because I'm dumb and stupid that I decided to follow this life and not be successful? Or am I supposed to take this as a shallow comment for a simplistic approach to life? And I'm still wondering what would be in the heart of that person because I cannot judge anybody. But I want us to reflect upon that. What do you consider successful in life? What is to be successful for you? Because according to St. Martin of Tours and according to St. Francis of Assisi, they thought that following Christ was to be successful. I want us to ask throughout this day this couple of questions. Are you willing to give half of your clock to a naked person? In other words, measure your generosity. How generous are you? Is there room for improvement? Is there room to be successful in Christ? And another thing, is that St. Martin of Tours reminds us of our conscience. So is our conscience well formed that we are able to act accordingly for the greater glory of Christ, for the great, greater glory of the gospel? So reflect upon that. Uh, to